This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so let's go through and have a look at another accounting standard related to our non-current assets. So following on from Property Plant and Equipment and IS16, we're now going to go through there and look at how to treat borrowing costs under IS23. Borrowing costs, what, what, what do we mean? What, what's it all about? Uh, well, if we're going to go through and construct an asset over a substantial period of time, then we may go and take a loan to fund the construction. Now, if we go through and take out a loan, you will therefore incur interest. That interest effectively is a cost that you are incurring due to the borrowing. And because that cost is directly attributable to the construction of the asset, i.e. if we'd have not been constructing the asset, then we would not have gone through and taken out the loan. Then instead of the traditional expensing of our interest through profit or loss, what we are allowed to go through and do is we are allowed to capitalise that interest as part of the cost of the asset. And then once it has been capitalized, it is then depreciated in the usual manner. Okay. Uh, but there's just rules that, that we need to follow because we don't want to have businesses just capitalizing borrowing costs on, on any old loan and saying, yeah, that, that's there as, as part of the construction of the asset. There has to be strict criteria. Okay. Uh, so what we've got there is, first of all, uh, the expenditure on the asset must have started. So you must actually physically be spending the money that you've borrowed. OK, if you've just borrowed the money and aren't spending any of it on the construction of the asset, that then we cannot start capitalising. So it's when the expenditure has started. OK, so that would be the first criteria we are incurring expense likewise if we're looking to capitalize the borrowing cost then we must have taken out the loan mustn't we so we must have taken out the loan i.e the borrowing costs are being incurred we are spending money on the construction and also we need to ensure that that the activities are in progress so we're actually spending the money having borrowed it originally and we are actually doing something to construct the asset we can't be going through there and having taken out a loan spending the money on the loan and not doing anything at all okay you have to be there physically with a work person on site beginning the construction okay yeah, and then that's when capitalization can start uh, just note, uh, capitalization must stop uh, when it is ready for use. Okay, uh, so therefore, if it is complete and ready to be used, we stop the capitalization of the borrowing costs. However, yeah, if it is not being used, that doesn't matter. Okay, as long as it is ready for use. Just note as well. Uh, if there is no active construction that is taking place. So that tends to be due to, to strike action or maybe bad weather. Then that strike action or that bad weather, that will therefore mean that there are no activities taking place. So therefore, we must temporarily stop the capitalization and expense the borrowing costs to profit or loss. Once the strike's over, once the bad weather is complete, we can then go back to capitalizing the costs. OK, uh, just notes again, rules to go through our introduction uh, when you're using your specific borrowings. Uh, we will use what is referred to as the effective rate of interest. So you will see when we get into our financial instruments chapter a little bit later in the syllabus that we can see two rates of interest attached to a loan. There'll be the, the coupon rate, so the legal amount of interest you must pay, but also the effective rate, which, which takes account of, of matching the loan interest over the life of the loan. So if you've got the coupon rate and the effective rate, you need to use the effective rate. Okay, but 
that's just a little bit maybe too far-fetched at this point in time uh, but the key bit is that if it's specific borrowings you use the effective rate not the coupon rate okay uh, bits and pieces again just to note going back to the top uh, if you've borrowed more money than what is necessary for the construction uh, so you've borrowed a large amount so that initially you'll only use some of it and then at a later point in time you, you will use more maybe because you've got a cheaper rate of interest through borrowing more well what you can go through and do there as well is any money that you've not spent you might decide to invest it temporarily so what would happen there is as well as incurring an interest expense you would go through there and have interest received. So what you would capitalize there is the net income. Okay, uh, so you would capitalize the net income of the expense and the interest received. Okay, uh, again, it needs to be on a qualifying asset. A qualifying asset effectively is just an asset that, that takes a considerable period of time to construct okay so that's it that's borrowing costs in a nutshell there's there's nothing much else around that even if you go through and read the standard there might be some additional aspects to consider that we'll think about when we get to sbr later in your acca journey okay but for now they're the rules once we know the rules the key is the application so let's just look at the following videos uh, and see how we get on with that application See you shortly.